As President of Triathlon Australia and on behalf of our boards and our state and territory associations, I wanted to bring you an update today on what we're doing around the COVID-19 crisis, some of our operational plans and some things that you can start to look forward to. I'm here with our CEO, Miles Stewart, who you all know, and we're going to talk you through some of the ways that we're monitoring very closely and who we're working with to make sure we have the best information available to you as quickly as we possibly can. First steps that we've done is to remove sanctioning from any events or races over the next period up until the end of April, which we will monitor on a regular basis and get back to you on our position on events. Um, this includes club events or events of any size. We recommend throughout all this that people adhere to government regulations and ensure they're using their social and moral obligations correctly and sticking to and adhering to that advice that's coming out on a regular basis. To answer some of the questions that you may have, we've put something on our website, which involves clubs, coaches, members, athletes, anybody at all who has questions, event directors around what's happening, what our stance is, and where we're moving on a daily basis. Those updates are coming through for you to have a look at and get some benchmarks off what the right advice will be moving forward. We've discouraged club training in groups as well. Um, we're not really entirely sure with triathlon training how you can remain uh, social distance, but um, but uh, we, we do recommend you be very careful out there with your training. We will start to provide some tips and tricks for people around some sort of training they could possibly do during this period of time. And we'll also update that on a regular basis. Our high performance athletes, if anyone's wondering, have been all pulled back home. So our coaches and athletes from around the world, we're now either home now or they're on their way. Um, some are in isolation, some are training. Um, but we're, we're different stages and places with different people in different locations. We are constant dialogue with the ITU and our governing partners around their expectations, where they're going, and uh, we're working diligently through all the updates that come our way probably on an hourly basis at the moment <laughs> yep. to, to come up with the best practice of how triathlon should move forward with this very unusual, unprecedented period we're going through. We're a really big community and we're really diverse and we understand there's a lot of people who are affected by this, not the least of which is our individual athletes and members, but that extends right through to our race directors, our volunteers who are technical officials at our race day activities, our clubs and our coaches. And we know that this is a really difficult and challenging time. I wear a couple of those hats myself, so I've had to make some new plans and we'll still continue to make some new plans over the coming period. And I'm really excited about some of the things that we're gonna to put together to help us do that. I'd really encourage us to continue to think about this as part of a community, not just the triathlon community, but our responsibility as part of a broader community and society. And that's really why we've put a lot of these recommendations in place and followed the guidelines that are out there. We can't think that we're so special that we can stay by ourselves. We do have an impact on our broader community and our goal here at Triathlon Australia and as part of our big triathlon community is to make sure that we do everything we possibly can to play our part. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as insurance is concerned, which is a big topic at the moment, as long as people are adhering to government guidelines, that insurance remains in place. And it's only when people step outside those guidelines that insurance will become a risky problem. But as you're aware, insurance updates are coming through on yes. a regular basis as well, which we've just had one around travel. And we will keep you up to date if there's any changes to anything that we're currently mm. utilising as far as insurance is concerned. There's some really great news, though. We have some really great partners in this. Our insurers are perhaps the best at the moment in terms of being able to cover us. Unlike some other sports and some other industries, we're doing really well in that space. There's also great news in that this doesn't have to stop everything. Sure, we can't race right now in some locations and for a period of time, but it doesn't mean we can't train. It doesn't mean that our coaches can't coach. It doesn't mean that our clubs can't still do all of the activities that they're doing. We just have to do them differently. We have to think about the creative ways that we work together to get through this period. And there's lots of really great tools that we can use to support each other through this period. And that's one of our big key takeouts, right, Miles, in that we need to support each other through this. Absolutely. We are one big family. We do need to look after each other. We do need to think about our social and moral yep. obligations and our reputational mm -hmm. as well along the way. But um, we'll put things in place. We'll try and make it as easy as possible. And we wish everybody all the best. So I know that there'll be a lot of questions about our age group world championships that are due to come up towards the back part of this year. And having represented our country a few times now, three or four, I think, um, I was certainly really keen to make sure that I was on those starting lines as well and to get my applications in. The great news is that whilst there is still uncertainty around, it is not too late for you to make sure that you get your applications in there and we will keep you updated as much as we possibly can. 
at the, at the moment, there's no reason to think that those events won't go ahead and that our team will have a fantastic experience wearing the green and gold. And I certainly hope, if I've done enough this year, that I might be one of those people too now that my schedule's a little freer. Yeah, and for next year, for 2021 Worlds at Townsville, oh. there's also some questions around IOQ, uh, for qualifying races and what that's going to mean. We can't tell you exactly what it's going to mean today as far as some of the events are concerned, which are coming up in the mm -hmm. near future. But certainly we'll bring you up to date. We'll let you know of any postponements of events or any cancellations of events. And we will keep you up to date on how those events are shaping up leading into a really important thing for us, which is Townsville. And we know it's going to be hotly contested. So my recommendation is use this period to train really well so that you've got the best possible shot in a very competitive field to get onto that start line, which is exactly what I'll be trying to do to make sure I'm ready for Townsville next year. So I don't know about you, but my next couple of months are going to look a little bit different to how I planned. I'm going to be doing a little bit of work with my coach <laughs> to work out what I'm going to be doing for the next few months, uh, just like I'll be doing with my own athletes, and I'm sure you'll be doing in your communities too. And that gives us some opportunities to have another look at what we're doing, refresh and reframe, perhaps fix some things we haven't maybe paid attention to. I think I've got some cycle skills I need to go and work on. Maybe some swimming too, I'm pretty sure Miles would say. Uh, and we'll find some ways to work through that together over the next couple of months. So we're really keen to be able to hear from you and to support you, and that's certainly what we will be doing. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting back to a starting line soon, and I can't wait to support our race directors around the country. I know I've already got my eye on watching those socials and those information. As soon as they come out, I'll be absolutely making sure that I register for a couple of events, and I really hope that you support our community too. We hope that uh, some of our behaviour over the next little bit is respectful and mindful of the fact that these people are going through some really difficult times. Our coaches and clubs are going to really struggle through this and it's not their fault, it's not your fault, it's not my fault, it's not any of our fault, but it is our responsibility to behave in the way that we would like to behave. We're a values-driven organisation and a values-driven sport and if we can do that, we'll all get to the starting line pretty well and really look forward to seeing everyone out there. And I look forward to not having to wait around to watch Michelle get to the finish line, so good for everybody. Some of us are a little slower than others <laughs> and that's okay too, right? Bye everyone.